Mamba out. Saucy, yeah, bitch, I do this often My bitch is bad, she always in office So I got a tags, I'm running my body Can't see the pads, I'm living too fast With 20, my dash, I'm hoping I lost him He wanna brag, I undid his bag And took what he had, don't care what it cost him Then he broke, he turned to a hoe I seen him before, this shit is exhausting Ran out of hope, I wanna be known I'm snatching my soul, you're Randy Marshall I Yo, what is up everybody, welcome to Sports Time Bears 8, and I'm Dear Sounds, and that's Aiden Munson, and thank you for joining us here on Sports Time Bears 8, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure to comment down below, and also make sure to hit that button for posts, and no, we can share for every video, and other from channel, and, and Aiden, today we are discussing the Boston Celtics, Aiden, we just heard the news that Jalen Brown is out for the remainder, and I mean the remainder of the season, the All-Star is out for the rest of the season, Due to uh, a torn ligament in his wrist, this is devastating news for the Boston Celtics, and in all but ends any hopes the Celtics have of doing anything in the playoffs. As of right now, the Boston Celtics are in the seventh seed and are currently in the NBA playing tournament for the Eastern Conference. And uh, based on how the NBA series are looking, they're probably going to go up against the Charlotte Hornets and Lamelo Ball in that first game. For the seven and eight seed during the play in tournament. So eight, I'm gonna give you the four here. What are your thoughts on the Boston Celtics? What are your thoughts on the playoff hopes? And what are your thoughts about the Jalen Brown injury? I really like the Celtics. I really like Jason Tatum. Jalen Brown, hmm, kind of iffy on. I know he was an all-star this year, but I what okay. Let me explain something. What this team is lacking is presence in the pain. And obviously, they don't have a liable big man, so they put Tatum at the three and the four sometimes so they can get the same defensive so they can get the same defensive impact because he plays both ways extremely well and Kemba was an amazing defender when he's healthy at the one and then Marcus Smart of course is a good defender when he's not getting fouled out the damn game so um the lack of a big man is an extremely big problem for this team and we've discussed this over the time the time again you can't have your only big men being Taco Fall and Tristan Thompson that's not how it works. You got to have some, you got to at least have a solid, at least have a solid rotation. Get some dudes coming off the bench, get them engaged, sign somebody, shoot. Obviously the Kemba situation really hurt them. Hasn't been healthy the entire season. He played hurt, which is something we can all respect here. When you're playing through an injury and you're still trying your best, but it's overall just hurting the team. Marcus Smart's foul rate has gone up and up and up and up and up. He's barely been able to stay in game sometimes. Jason Tatum is doing the best he can, but of course he's exerting himself to full capacity as he tied the single game Celtic scoring record to win a damn game. Jalen Brown was doing what he could. He was an, he was an all-star caliber player, yes. But he's not the same guy on defense that he is on offense. And we know that that's not his game. That's not his style. And I can respect that. He's the score. He is a top second option score on the team, but Jason Tatum can't be the top defender and the top score. That's not how it works. You got to have some help. You got to have more than just Marcus Smart. You got to have more than just an in, often injured Kimball Walker. You got to have more than freaking Tristan Thompson. You got to have more than seven foot seven taco fall who hasn't been able to get any starting minutes. You got to get more. That's what my feelings on Celtics. Feelings on the playoff hopes the same feelings we had at the beginning of the season. You missed your window. You missed your window. And now you got to wait 40, and now you got to wait four or five years before to find a freaking generational big man to go help Tatum and Jalen Brown. And let's hope, let's hope, let's hope for God's sake they don't get injured. Let's hope for God's sake that none of them get injured. Let's hope for God's sake they all stay healthy and they can all last through to get to their next contract. Because what you're going to do is you're going to have Jason Tatum through his entire Supermax and you're not going to be in the championship window because you did what? You didn't maximize on your opportunity. And now you've missed your window and now you have to wait a couple of years until you can get a good enough big man. You're not going to be high enough in the draft to get a big man. You're not going to be high. Well, I mean... Technically, you shouldn't be able to get hard, high enough in the lottery to get a good big man in this draft. But by if some magical way you end up with Evan Mobley or Greg Brown or Kai, if you end up with any of those guys, it'll be a freaking miracle. 
because you are too deep into the playoff conversation to be making the playoffs to have a pick high enough to be able to do that. So guess what you got to do? You got to wait. You got to wait till another opportunity arises. So maybe free agency, maybe a trade, maybe just got to wait till there's a draftable, draftable great big man. I don't know. But your window's not now. And your window's probably not going to be next year unless some drastic changes are made. And you're not a contender. And you might not even beat the Hornets. I don't even know at this point. LaMelo Ball came back from an injury that should have kept him out from the entire season and is now, again, the rookie of the year. You got P.J. Washington on that team. You got Terry Rozier, Scary Terry. You got Gordon Hayward, my man, who is going to come back in time for the playoffs. I don't know. I don't know if you can take this team. It is a serious question. You have Jason Tatum, Mark Smart, and what's left of Kemba Walker for this season. You are in some deep you-know-what. I don't know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and how you're going to manage to pull out a win or how you're even going to manage to contend with this team. I take that back. You're going to contend with this team because Jalen Brown, because uh, Jalen, uh, excuse me, because Jason Tatum is just that dude. You're going to contend with this team. But will you be able to finish out that game? That's the questions I have for you. Again, I add, you need to make some drastic changes in a couple of years or else you'll be sitting there waiting until another generational big man comes around. Because guess what? You missed your window. You have missed your window. And again, miracles do happen. There have been some crazy stuff to go down in the lottery draft, in the lottery. But I don't think that's how it's going to end up for you guys. Missed your window. Missed your window, man. What do you have, Darius? Well, Aiden, when I'm looking at the Celtics here, of course, the Jalen Brown is the Jalen Brown injury is very, very devastating because that pretty much ruins all of their playoff hopes, as far as I'm concerned. I'm looking at how if the playing tournament does play out, and if the Boston Celtics do win against the Charlotte Hornets, uh, projecting that's how the playing tournament is going to go. They're facing the Brooklyn Nets the first round of the playoffs, and there is no way. With 100% healthy Kevin Durant, 100% healthy Kyrie Irving, and we project 100% healthy James Harden, there's no way the Nets are losing to a Jalen Brown with Boston Celtics. Even if Jason Tatum is dropping 60 points per game, the Celtics are still going to find a way to lose. And Aiden, I was re-watching our NBA team preview for the Boston Celtics like a couple of months ago, like early, like mid-late 2020. And we both said that the two main problems for the Celtics were one, uh, big man in the paint, you mentioned that, and two, depth. And looking at this team, of course, Kimba Walker, he's not the same Kimba Walker anymore due to injuries, all right? Uh, Marcus Smart, yeah, he, he's played 47 games season, started 44, averaging 13 points per game, great defensive presence, all right? You bring in Evan Fournier via trade, he's kind of, inco- he's pretty inconsistent, all right? You trade Daniel Thais, you still have Robert Williams, Tristan Thompson, Mr. Kardashian, as far as I'm concerned. You bring in Jeff Teague as an experiment, that did not work out. You, you bring in Jabari Parker as an experiment. And he is barely played, Aiden. The man is barely played. He's only played eight games on the season for the Celtics. So I'm looking at the Celtics as far as a as as far as a depth standpoint. The Celtics are not there yet. And and you mentioned the championship window. Of course, we all know uh back twenty eighteen, back in the East Conference Finals game seven, they eventually fell short to LeBron and Cavs. All right. 2019, 2020, you go through uh, basically I remember twenty nineteen, eliminating second round. Versus the Bucks, all right, I believe. Then this past year, LMA in the East Conference Finals versus the Miami Heat. So the Celtics were able to get there, but they weren't able to get over the hump. Yes, the Celtics are one of the top teams in the East. They're going to be one of the top teams in the East for many, many years to come. And I'm looking at the Celtics here. Of course, Jason Tatum, all right, all-star, superstar, averaging basically – Almost 27 points per game, putting up seven rebounds, four and a half assists. Jalen Brown went healthy. He was averaging 25, 6 and 4. But the main factor why the Boston Celtics are in, this, are in the seventh seed position in these comments right now, Aiden, is Kimball Walker. Because the Boston Celtics are clearly not getting the production from Kimball Walker that they expected. So, Aiden, Kimball Walker is basically averaging 19 points, going on five assists. Basically, four rebounds. He's played 42 games on the season. Jason Tatum's played 61. 
Jacob Brown has played 58. Marcus Smart has played 47. All right. Daniel Dice, who was traded at the trade deadline, has played as has played the same amount of games as of now, at the time of recording, as Kemba Walker, 42 for the Boston Celtics. All right. So the durability, the availability, and the accountability for Kemba Walker is simply not there for the Celtics. And back to the playoff hopes. If I was the Boston Celtics, I think clearly I would have a better chance to win against the Joe Longby and the Sixers versus the Nets. And I would take that eight seed matchup over the second seed. But I'm looking at the teams based on the playing tournament. As of now, at the time of recording, we're looking at Boston, we're looking at Charlotte, we're looking at, I believe, Indiana and Washington. Who is on a roll? Who is on a roll? Shout out to Russell Westbrook, Mr. Triple Double. So, even if you do lose that AC game, you're going to have to go against one of the, either the Indiana Pacers, who have Malcolm Brockton, a very, very underrated player, DeMonster Bonus, an all star, Karis LeVert, a great, prominent, and efficient scorer. Or you go up against Mr. Triple Double Russell Westbrook, who I believe in a couple of days is going to break Oscar Robinson's triple double record all time, and Bradley Beal, the NBA's leading yes, scorer, the NBA's leading scorer. That's who you're going to have to go against just to get knocked down in the first round of the playoffs. So I'm going to have the ball soaks here. Jason Tatum can drop 81 points. He can drop the hunt. He can drop a hundred. But if Kimball Walker is going to play like this then you're simply going to lose. I don't care if Jason Tatum jumps two, drops basically 100 points, 80 points per game for the rest of the season. It's a team sport. It's a team sport. And in order to be a contender, in my eyes, and in your eyes as well, Aiden, you have to have some depth. You have to have a big body present in the paint. You have to have scoring. And Jason Tatum cannot do all the scoring. Basically, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown combined for basically 40, 50 points per game. Every game they play. 40, 50 points. Campbell Ke- Walker, on the base, he's basically putting up 19 points on any efficient shooting. So, I'm looking at the ball so this year. One of the playoff hopes, they're not going to get far, even if they do make the playoffs. They're first one because guess what? You're going to go up against basically either Philly, which are rolling beat, who's literally, in my mind, the best big man in the game, Ben Simmons, a prominent playmaker, Doc Rivers, a great coach, Seth Curry, a phenomenal Defensive shooter. player of the year, Ben Simmons. Let's right. not forget that. Seth Curry, great shooter, and a whole lot of other players as well. Don't, don't forget about Tobias Series. Hashtag J. Cole. All right. Now, or okay. you're going to go up against the Brooklyn Nets. All right. You don't wanna, you don't want to go up against them either. Now, the Boston Celtics, they are a great young team. This is a devastating injury for Jalen Brown. He was dominating all season long. Aiden, I know you have some thoughts about Jalen Brown, but looking about the Greek, Jalen Brown was clearly the second best player this season for the Celtics. It wasn't Kimba Walker. It wasn't Barker Smart. It wasn't Evan Fournier. It was Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, the best, one of the best duels in the league. Devastating news for the Celtics. Uh, devastating right. Offensively. And guess what, Aiden? Now, here's the thing. If the Celtics don't even make the playoffs, Brad Stevens' job, is definitely in jeopardy. Same thing with Danny Ainge because guess what? The Boston Celtics have been hesitant to make big moves. You look at the point guards the Celtics have been through. Going back all the way back 27, 26, 2017. Go back to Isaiah Thomas dominating the league. Trade him for Kyrie Irving. Stay there for two seasons. Now you bring in Kimball Walker. All right. Last time I checked, they traded Terry Rozier for Kimball Walker. Last time I checked, Terry Rozier has been dominating all season. I believe the leading scorer for the Charlotte Hornets. Kimball Walker is barely even playing. It's Terry, man. Kimball Walker is barely playing. So the Celtics have to make some moves. And I remember in that NBA team preview, I said that the Boston Celtics should pick up Boogie Cousins. They should pick up DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah. Because, because I was it strongly provided, against it. It would provide a big body presence. It would provide even some shooting and some scoring and some veteran presence as well. But now you look at Biggie Cousins. Guess what? He's getting double teamed. And he's coming off the bench <laughs> for the Clippers. He's getting double teamed while he's coming off the bench for the Clippers. So, for the Celtics, it's a concern as a big man. Because Daniel Thais was pretty much the only... Consistent big man on your team. It was between him and Robert Williams. I didn't see Tristan Thompson 
I don't see him as a part of the discussion. He's only basically grabbing around. Let's see here. I mean, he's grabbing eight boards, eight boards. He's also putting up around eight points as well. But he's not the ideal big man. Where you're, you expect him to guard Giannis or Embiid or, or Kevin Durant? No, that's not just going to happen. That that's just not how the game of basketball works. So, as far as the Boston Celtics, as far as the Boston Celtics playoff playoff hopes are concerned, their season is clearly over. I expect them to bounce back next season. Of course, throughout the season, they've dealt with some COVID issues and some injuries as well. I do expect them to bounce back, but this season is not it. It is over for the Celtics. It's devastating games for Jalen Brown. Uh, devastating news for Jason Tatum, the Boston Celtics organization. Jay- Jason Tatum can drop as many points as he wants to. He can drop 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80. And I expect the Boston Celtics still to go down more than the playing tournament or the playoffs. Aiden, do you have any final words? I think Terry Rosier is going to enact his revenge and take him and his Hornets team, along with the young such sensation LaMelo Ball, to the what they would call the promised land for the Hornets since they haven't made the playoffs in what seems like an, an eternity. Um, I hope for the best for this young team. I hope for the best for Jalen Brown. I hope for the best for... Jason Tatum, hope for the best for Marcus Smart, and I definitely hope for the best for <clears throat> Kemba Walker. But you got to find a way to reopen that window, and you got to make a big, big, big move. Get a big man at all costs. I don't care what you got to give up to give him. If you got to give up four first round picks, give them up. Get a big man for the sake of your franchise, for the sake of your young players, for the sake of the team, and for the sake of those two men's jobs. Get a big man. That's all I got to say. Well, thank you for joining us for Sports Under Eight. And if you haven't already, make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below. And also, make sure to hit that button for notifications for every video. And I'm from the channel. Until then, everybody, I am Derek Sounds. Nothing Dana Mustin. And we will see you tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. Get well, JP. Uh, see you tomorrow, everybody.